Hello guys, welcome back. This is Andrea and today with water. This video is divided in three sections. In the first section I will talk about uh, flex internals and then I will talk about the APIs to interact with flex and then I will talk about how to create the water as you saw already in the video. But let's dive into it. To explain the flex internals, I have to, to do a step back and explain a bit what Godot uh, does uh, during the frames. And uh, as any other game engine, Godot executes some operation during the frames. The first thing that Godot does is to execute the physics. Then it executes the idle processing and then it executes the rendering. And then the frame starts again. Of course, this is a simplification of the entire processing. Uh, one of the most notable things that Godot does inside the physics steps is stepping the, the normal physics engine. In the most cases, the physics engine, like bullet physics engine that Godot is running on, uh, usually runs in a single thread and in the same thread of Godot. This means that during the execution, the idle processing, Godot already finished the execution, the stepping of the physics. But when we introduce Flex, we know that Flex runs inside the GPU and it runs in parallel with Godot thread. And in order to deal with the, the Flex processing, we need a way to synchronize Godot and Flex. And this step is called synchronization. During the synchronization phase, what Godot uh, and Flex does is simply to talk each other. For example, Godot uh, load uh, the particle body model that are not yet loaded inside Flex and Flex tell to Godot the particle's position to update if there are. Another really important thing, Godot tell to Flex that can start its operations and by doing so Flex runs and it can't be accessed anymore until the next frame. In Godot, for example, we can use uh, the physics process function in order to have a callback that is executed during the physics operation. We can do the same for flex. In fact, there are uh, some ways that give the possibility to access the synchronization phase and thus customize the flex iteration and the flex processing. One of the most used way to customize the flex execution is for sure being the command process signal. This is not only the most easy way, but it's also the most effective. The first thing to notice is that we are inside a script that is extending the particle body. And the particle body has built in a signal called command process that uh, also give the possibility to access the particle body command. And these commands give the possibility to access to some useful APIs like add particles that is, doesn't need to be explained. Also it gives the possibility to add springs, add an active particles, apply force to particles. Or, or rather get the particle counting and so on. So give the possibility to tell Flex what should do and it instantly do it. And now it's really easy to understand that uh, 
to, to use these commands, we have to be inside the particle body because otherwise we can't attach a signal like this. The other way uh, to manipulate the flex execution is to also, if you don't have any particle body, is to connect to the sync and signal executed by the particle physics server uh, in this way. Uh, you have to stay careful because you have to check the space but I, I will deepening into this in another video because you have to do uh, more steps in order to control flex because as you can see here you don't have the commands object that give you the possibility to access directly to your object so you have to take it in another way but we'll, we will see it in another video We just saw how Flex Internals works. We saw what are the commands API that we can easily perform on any particle body commands. We know how to connect uh, to, the, to the synchronization phase. Uh, but now, how is possible to spawn the water and, and do this kind of effects? Well, it's really simple. We here I have a water lane that is just a really simple particle body uh, node. Here I have attached this script and this script has a really easy uh, code to understand. For example, here in the ready parameter we have set a stop level to and set global transform to the main transform. This is necessary to do because if you keep this water lens particle body here under the player, what uh, what happened is that you, when you move your character, you move also uh, the the spawner point of your of the water. And uh, what this means is that each time this spawner changes the position, uh, all the particles inside the world are transformed by the movements that the character does, and we don't want it. So, uh, and since it's really useful to have this water lens inside the player, it's most easy if we set the global transform to zero, so the center of the map and set a stop level true so the character doesn't update anymore the transformation of the water lens node. Then I'm connecting to the command process as I explained before and the water spawn by using this uh, command process code that is really simple to understand. Here I have short particle function that accept the number of particle to spawn the velocity direction that I want to, uh, to, to give to the water just spawned and also the position because remember the position of the water lens now is at the center of the map so I have to specify where I want to spawn uh, the, the water. Uh, this function when it's called uh, what does is to add uh, is to set the particle that I want to spawn in the next synchronization. And so, in the next synchronization, what I do is to add the particles that I want to add in this way. This function, add particles, also return me the first ID added, because you have to imagine that the water lands, after few iteration, uh, you keep adding particles and so you already have a pool of particles so your, your first ID is the first ID of your added particles and now we have to initialize the particles that we just added and this is done by using the initialize particle command that accept the ID of the particle also the position and the mass. Here we have the other command to set the velocity, set particle velocity that again accept the ID of the particle that we want to manipulate and the velocity. 
Here I have this function that just give me a random velocity in a random direction. And, uh, and then I reset the particle to add to zero. So the next synchronization, uh, I don't add particles. Now it's really easy to understand that this short particle is called inside the player here when I want to shoot. And, and then what happens here is that when I press Z, Z basically it show it fired the water in this way. And it's very, very nice effect. But one question that you could do is, but why we can see the particles here? Well, the reason is because this particles doesn't have uh, a shader in this moment. Well, it has a shader, uh, but, but it's not yet completed. Here, another thing that I have to mention is that the water lens uh, is a particle body and like all particle bodies need something to render the physics. In the soft body, for example, we were using uh, the particle body mesh, this one. But instead, since we are dealing with fluids, what we have to use is no more the particle body mesh instance, but instead we have to use the fluid particles. This is a geometry, a special geometry, that allow me to uh, render in a really optimal way uh, the water. And then it's also necessary that you add this shader inside uh, inside uh, this geometry because this shader is what make the water appear for example if here I am removing the fluid normals when I play the scene I can see that the fluids change completely its behavior but now I don't want to talk about the shader because it's a bit complicated and uh, I will dedicate a full video on it where I will show, uh, I will implement a better fluid shader and also I will explain all the information that you need in order to create this shader. For example, I will talk about fluid thickness, fluid depth, fluid normals and so on, but we will see in the next video. The water adds really a lot of features in Flex and these features must, uh, can be controlled inside the physics particle world that give the possibility to control how, the, how each drop of water behave regarding its mass because you can have a mass of one but if the buoyancy is zero, for example, it will act like a smoke. In fact, you can see that it doesn't drop down as before. So, if you instead increase the, buoyan the buoyancy, for example, to 20, you can see that uh, it's really heavy. So we didn't change the mass, but but we change how the um, how the mass affect each each drop and then also we have the cohesion the cohesion is a, param a parameter that is used to control the um, the dropping sides you have to imagine the cohesion like if you are uh, filling a glass of water with water and you keep filling it until it uh, reach the, the top, the max of the, the glass. When it reaches the max you can and you keep filling it slowly, you can see that it creates a kind of bubble around this water that doesn't drop off. Well, the cohesion try to, uh, try to uh, simulate exactly this behavior. In fact, here you can see that the water try to stay together until it uh, reach a certain point. For example, before I have 0.04 of cohesion and the water was acting in completely different way. Now you can see that the particle uh, go spread more easily. You can see again the flexibility of this physics engine that uh, using only one shape that is the sphere 
it's possible to create a lot of scenarios so we can spatiate from uh, the rigid bodies to the soft bodies to the water uh, i hope that i am intriguing you with flex so you will try it and if you do please let me know on the comments below and uh, yeah for now that's it see you next time bye bye